If you are looking at using AI with inside your Flutterflow application, then you have come to the right place because this particular example has dropped onto the marketplace. It introduces some custom code into your own project, which you can then hook onto to then do some basic AI interaction. We're going to create a basic project ourselves. I'm going to show you how to use it and uh, hope you enjoy it. Please do follow along. So the application that we are going to create is this very, very simple hashtag generator. It's not going to win any awards, of course, for design, but it's certainly going to give you a good idea on how it works. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to type in a, a phrase here called pop music. I'm going to hit, hit the generate tags option and it's just going to go away and it's going to create some hashtags for me, which I can then copy and paste into some social media. So a really, really simple example. So let's just quickly put this together and then you can see how the custom code actually works. So let's create a brand new project in Flutterflow. So with inside the create project screen, I'm just going to type in a hashtag a generator and I'm going to create a blank project. I'm going to skip this detail here, just going to turn the setup Firebase off and hit start building. And now we're going to head back over to the marketplace and then we're going to add the custom code into our application. So within the marketplace, if you just search the marketplace for chat GPT, and if you scroll down here, of course, at the time of recording, there is only 11 items here. There may be more now, now, depending on when you're actually watching it. This is the one that we want to choose. It's the basic open AI action. So just choose that. Click on add to project. And of course, just choose hashtag generator is the project that I've just created. If you've named it something different, then please do select that and hit done. So custom code will be um, included into your application here on the left hand side we're not too worried about the detail of this we're just going to leave this just to compile so I'm just going to hit the compile option here and it's just going to go away and do its thing and once that's done we can then include that and use that with inside our application okay now that comp compilation is now complete you can see here we've got no errors so we are good to go so let's head back to the UI builder and let's start building the UI Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is change the title of our application to just select the page title there. And in the text, I'm going to call this just hashtag uh, generator. And I'm going to click on the app bar here and I'm just going to center the title. So that's that. And then next, we're going to drag a container into the column that we've got here. So let's drag the container into the column. And then the container is going to hold our text phrase that the user is going to be able to type in. So let's just make the width of the uh, the actual container just move right across. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put 20 pads in right across here. So it's nicely kind of positioned in, in the middle. So next up, I'm going to look for the uh, text input widget. So let's just, uh, or the text fill widget, let's just grab hold of that. It's called text fill. We can just drag that into there. And I'm just going to change the name of the text field here. So I'm just going to call this phrase enter and of course as you change your names here in the in the widget tree of course the names will get reflected here so I highly do encourage that you do change the names of your your widget so at least it gives you a good reference point um, when you're using this with inside um, the left in the widget tree and of course so you're referencing them within actions themselves so let's just choose the uh, the hint text here we don't really want to call it hint some hint text so let's just uh, just just say enter enter phrase dot 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 something like that and then with inside the actual text well let's just move it slightly off of the sides here let's just put 20 in both left and right so now it's just a little bit more over and with inside the container actually let's just make the container um with a sort of rounded columns so let's go to border radius let's just type in say 20 here that means that we could just got these nice sort of round borders and i'm just going to choose the the actual phrase text field there and i'm just going to make sure that um yeah, that the max lines is turned off. So we want to have more than one line. So that's that. So let's just move back down into the column here. So now we want to add in a row. So let's just choose row here. And then here we just want to want to put a button in as well. So let's just uh, add the button in just there. And then within inside the row, we're just going to position everything nicely to the center. And we're just going to choose the button. And then we're just going to give the button a title. So let's call this uh, generate. Keep it nice and simple and then with inside the actual column again so just go up to the column choose the plus option there and this time we're going to add another row in we're just going to give the row a little bit of padding up here say in a further 20 
let's just lock that in there and then within inside the row we actually now want to add the uh, an actual text widget in there so let's hit text and then let's just remove the word the uh, hello world message out of there we don't need that uh, and then we're just going to expand the text out to the to the full width there that's good so that's our basic UI kind of created let's create a state variable now on the page which is going to hold our hashtag generated content so the way you do that is you go onto the home page you then move over to the um, the actual state management op option there on the right and we're just going to add a field in here and we're just going to call this uh, hash hashtags and it's going to be of type string hit confirm so what's going to happen here as soon as as soon as we actually press the generate button it's going to it's going to call out to chat gpt it's going to then take the phrase it's then going to generate the hashtags and it's going to load it into that particular state variable and then of course that state variable now needs to be associated with our text widget so let's choose text widget let's go up here to text and let's just go down to page state and then say hashtags so one thing you might notice when you actually run up the application, you get this unexpected null value. If you see this, um, the way that you actually resolve it is go back to your project, click on the actual home page, go to the locals, uh, go to the state manager, click on local page state variable, hit that, and then inside this particular initial field value, just hit, give it this a space, hit confirm, and then if you go back to your application, hit instant reload, you should find that actually then disappears. There you go. So our application is now ready to have some logic connected to the generate button. So let's do that now. So back inside the widget tree of Flutterflow, let's hit the generate button here and let's move over to the actions and open up the action flow editor. So if inside the action flow editor, we're going to first add a conditional action. We're going to want to check to make sure the user has actually keyed a value into the phrases text field. So let's choose add conditional action. And up, up here, we just want to go to conditions and we want to do a single condition. And at the first value, we're just going to set our, our, our page state here. And we're going to say, um, uh, sorry, let's just choose our widget state and choose phrase. And then we're going to say equal to, but we're going to change this to is set and not empty. We want to make sure it's set and we want to make sure it's not empty. So let's just choose that. And of course, if we hit confirm here, we, we know that we can enter down this happy path, of course, if the user has actually got a phrase keyed in. So now we've inside this particular section, we're now going to um, invoke our chat GPT custom function that's been added to our project that we did at the very beginning. So let's hit the plus option and let's hit add action. And then if you scroll right down the bottom here, you'll see an option called custom actions chat GPT. So if you just choose that, and on the right hand side you can see here that we need to set a number of functional arguments we have an api key and we have a prompt now with an api key of course um, in order for you to invoke the open ai apis you are going to need to have an api key um, if you want some instructions on how to grab one of those yourself please do click on the link up here that will give you uh, that's one of my previous videos which kind of gives you a bit of an overview of how to actually grab yourself an api key so please do check that video out but we're just going to assume here that you've already done that and then you can come in and then you can key your API key into this section. So I'm going to paste my API key actually into here. Oh, let's just click there. And um, next up, um, we need to put a prompt in. So this is the uh, the content that you are going to pass across to the, um, the open AI. Now we want to generate hashtags, so we're just going to be very descriptive about that. So what we need to do is we're going to use um, combined text here that's going to take the, the the, the action that we actually want OpenAI to do, and then we're gonna pass in our phrase. So just choose the little option there, check the field, and then we're gonna to want to go down to combine text. So what we're gonna do is in the first text field, we're gonna put generate hash tags four, and then colon, and then within here, we're gonna click add text, and we're gonna just select this option here, and we're gonna choose the widget state, and we're gonna enter that we wanna grab the phrase that's being keyed in. Um, that's all that we need to do. So we're just gonna say generate hashtags for colon, and then the actual term or the phrase that we actually want to generate hashtags for. So just hit confirm. So next up, we're gonna to want to choose an action output variable name. So when our chat GPT response come back, we need to set a variable for us to actually then handle the response. So let's just call this, um, I don't know, let's just call this result. In fact, let's be a bit more descriptive than that. Let's call it um, chat GPT result. 
hit enter and then what we can now do is we can now add in a conditional action now that will actually check to make sure that that value is set so we can go up to conditions and we can choose a single condition and we're just going to do the same thing again we're going to choose the um, the actual uh, value itself we're going to go action outputs so we're going to choose the jack gpt result and then we're going to say instead of equal to we're going to say is set and not empty so we know that we've got a response here if we go down this particular happy path and of course what we now need to do is we now need to set the uh, the hashtag uh, sort of page state variable with the contents that's come back from the chat GPT results so just hit the plus there had at action and we're just going to want to update the page state and we're just going to set the field so let's choose hashtags and then we're going to click on the uh, hashtags option there we're going to set the update type as set value and of course the value is going to be the action output which is the chat GPT result so let's hit close and that's pretty well much all that we need to do so let's just quickly test this out to see how it performs so here we are now in the test mode let's just type in pop music and hit generate and let's see if we get any hashtags back there we go so let's type in uh, let's just type in weather for let's say uh, London hit generate there we go plenty of hashtags for us to use in our social media posts so um, that's pretty well much it for this particular video um, it was just a really short sharp quick start video into using this particular custom function with inside your own application there's plenty of use cases for this of course one example might be that you might have um, some text that you want to give the option for a user to kind of sort of regenerate so you could actually use this to as, as a button with inside your application to of course take some content that the user has typed in and you could um, I don't know instead of saying um, sort of generate hashtags you can actually say just um, make this sound better colon and then obviously the phrase or the content that they've put in and then of course that could then be used as, as more up, uh, like an update of content coming back from OpenAI with inside the application. So there's lots and lots of use cases for this. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you love these type of videos, please do like the video. It really does help me out. And of course, please also subscribe to the channel. There's so much more of this stuff coming over the weeks and months. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.